Hey, what's up guys? Old Painless here, and today we are looking at KFC's Opticlones, which is uh, a third-party masterpiece interpretation of Reflector. Now, this is actually the third third-party offering to, uh, you know, give us a masterpiece Reflector. And, uh, you know, the first two companies, Make Toys and Fans Toys, both did really good takes on him, but KFC's aesthetically, from all the promo uh, pictures and stuff, from the prototypes and whatnot... Um, I thought they looked really nice, so I wanted to give them a shot and just, you know, see if they're actually improving their product. Uh, you know, I had a pretty good experience with uh, their transistor, and, uh, you know, I just wanted to see if they're going to evolve as a company and keep putting out better products with better, you know, QC and whatnot, so... Nonetheless, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the packaging here. I think KFC actually excels in this department. I love the animated um, style, the sort of the cell-shaded styling of the uh, characters here with a nice silver foiling for Opticlones right there. We do get a Velcro uh, opening door here. We can see the clamshell on the inside. And then we do get some uh, more artwork on the inside as well as some you know, plot or character bio breakdown type stuff there. But uh, all in all, I, I think the packaging works really well. You can see the wire framed uh, three figures. We see the camera on the tripod there. But yeah, I think this looks really nice. Now in terms of accessories, we do get the owner's guide, which is, uh, it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's fairly well illustrated. You know, it does a pretty decent job uh, breaking down step by step for, you know, the two variations for the transformation, as well as the uh, battery installation for the chest. We're going to talk about this later on. I'm not going to demonstrate it on camera, but man, this is a pain in the butt. And, uh, yeah, some of the accessory breakdowns and whatnot there. So, pretty good. Uh, I do think, you know, this works fairly well, but some of the stuff, like step three here, uh, they really didn't indicate very well how this actually sort of unpegs and unfolds. And again, I'll touch more on this during the transformation portion, um, but some stuff you want to be looking out for, you don't want to be causing un any unnecessary stress or stress marks on your figure like I ended up doing um, so but again we'll touch on all those little aspects there and for anyone wondering right there is the documentation for those little foot flaps that we heard about from other uh, folks in terms of these getting wedged down on their prototype versions so they did make it a point to illustrate that you want to raise those flaps up uh, to prevent any kind of issue right there but good stuff we do get three collector cards, which is kind of neat for the three different Opticlones right there. One, two, and three. Yeah, that's fine. A little mini camera, which is kind of nice. Uh, three Energon cubes. This is a solid one, which is cool. Uh, the, another one here, which uh, looks like it's almost melted, uh, the way this kind of uh, curves on the inside there. But um, this was actually sculpted to look like... Um, you know, a Transformer's holding this up and drinking the Energon out of the box here. So that's a really cool, clever little touch. I'd never seen that before. And then lastly, we do get this guy here, which is basically sort of a compressed uh, stack of Energon cubes there. Pretty cool. A little handle here, which uh, I'm not really going to install this, but I believe it sort of uh, hooks onto the camera mode to kind of give you a sort of like a, like a camera type of setting option right there. And then lastly, we have the figure here in camera mode. Uh, in terms of accessories, we do have a, a flash up top. Uh, we do have the camera lens here in the front. We'll touch on these more, but these both can convert into weapons for the figure. And then a tripod's included, which it also can detach. This uses a basic peg system. It would have been nice if they d did some sort of um, like a threaded screw hole option like the other two uh, reflectors out there. So you could actually attach the camera uh, to a real tripod, but it actually, it's, actually maybe they could have done that. I don't know. It's a little thin here, the where, where it basically attaches in. I don't know if they'd have to sort of change the uh, the hip design for the central bot here in terms, of, in terms of accommodating a threaded connection. Uh, but this one also can break up and turn into weapons, and we'll look in this, at this later on as well. But enough about, you know, packaging and accessories and all that fun stuff. You know, let's dig into the figure itself. Uh, so this is Reflector, in his camera mode, obviously, and uh, it looks really nice, I think. It cleans up very well. They did a pretty unique take in terms of the face of the camera, where these 
uh, three front surfaces are basically the backpacks of uh, the robots themselves. So they created a very clean face to the camera uh, by having sort of a, a shell forming backpack which it's maybe a little bit cheating but I don't really mind it because it cleans up super well in uh, robot mode and uh, you know it really does create a nice clean aesthetic for the front of the camera and as you can see I pulled off the lens here you can see the uh, sculpted silver painted uh, camera lens on the inside which looks pretty nice we get some uh, fake levers and whatnot there as well uh, on the camera front decent paint uh, I do like the green and silver framing this section here but there's actually a little bit of a paint chip I'm not sure if that came from um, out of the box like that or if I you know, whacked it on something while I was transforming it I don't know but it does kind of stink to have a blemish on the face of the alt mode uh, so prominent right there you know right out of the box day one so a little bit of a bummer um, you know but I think otherwise the paint on this figure looks pretty nice in terms of a side shot, you can see that uh, this paneling here is actually the back of the legs in robot mode, so that unfolds and creates that solid side finish, which is pretty cool. The back cleans up really nicely as well. There we go. And our side right there. There's a button here. You can actually install a battery, which unfortunately I didn't have available at the time of getting this figure, but there's a nice solid click to it, and uh, it actually makes a shutter a camera shutter sound which is really cool so I'm gonna actually get that battery eventually to install in here um, I do have the other batteries though for the chest light which we will be showing off as well and then lastly this flash just basically pops off it's attached uh, via a little peg right there and uh, this actually can open up to reveal some rockets there and you do have double handles here so you can have a bot hold it on both sides which is pretty cool because it's a big bulky rocket launcher a nice little touch. Um, I, I appreciate that they're integrating the accessories in some fashion, um, you know, for the robot mode. And just for some size comparisons, here he is with Masterpiece Sideswipe, so you can kind of get an idea of just the scale that we're working with here. Uh, it is a pretty bulky camera, but it actually still feels pretty good in hand. You know, for as thick as it is, it, it does work pretty well. And just to check him out with another KFC product, um, here we go, next to Transistor. So. Again, pretty comparable sizes here. This maybe has a tiny bit more depth to it, but not by much, actually. I mean, it's pretty comparable in that sense. Again, a little bit taller, a little bit wider on the transistor, a little bit more front-to-back depth on reflector here. Now, my only real complaint about the camera is that I feel the lens is a tiny bit small. Um, it's definitely a bit larger sculpted on their little miniature version here but usually with an SLR or DSLR you have a pretty uh, robust lens on those cameras uh, maybe not maybe a tad longer for the most basic but usually much uh, girthier I guess you could say <laughs> that's kind of an odd choice of words but uh, it would be a, a wider like larger lens itself so I don't know I, I think it still works pretty well it still looks fairly convincing um, just might have been a little bit nicer to have a bigger lens, especially since this really just creates weapons, so why not just make it a better alt mode? It does look pretty nice though, otherwise I, I dig the fact that it's a clear plastic front and you can see the sculpted detail on the inside, so it's a pretty cool convincing effect right there. But yeah, good stuff. Um, this does actually lock in pretty securely as well. There's a series of pegs on the inside. Uh, the legs on each bot actually lock together. Uh, via a tab here, a tab here, and there's a series of tabs um, on the interior of both legs as you're transforming it, which locks that all together. And then there's about two tabs per side, so these all kind of lock together fairly snug. But it's very well done. All right, well, I think that's enough with the camera mode here. Um, again, pretty well done. I, I definitely dig this, but uh, more importantly, let's get this sucker transformed, get him into his robot modes. Uh, just so we can check that out. Um, just a, a kind of a, a heads up here. The two exterior bots transform identically. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing both of those off. Um, I will transform one, and then I will show the backpack on this guy, um, the middle bot, which is really the only difference between the exterior and the, the middle uh, bot's transformations. But otherwise, everything is identical. 
and it's really not worth showing all three on, on camera, so let's get started. they just kind of tell you to pull this forward and it doesn't work so well because this side panel and the front on both sides have a series of pegs which kind of lock into each other to keep it secure so if you pull this forward you're gonna stress the hell out of the little pegs on the inside which will show off to you later but the key here is lifting these side panels first And that's going to free up this front part altogether so you can lift that forward. And make sure you also unplug this. Now this flap's a little bit scary, and if you look really closely right there, there's a little stress mark on the corner. Super tiny, but um, I found that the right leg on all three of these have a little stress mark in the exact same spot. The left leg is totally fine. Uh, don't know why that is, it's just the tolerances are worked a little bit differently apparently. But uh, just make sure you kind of hold it and secure it as you fold that down. Because what you need to do is then flip this little tab up like so and then flip that back up. But that's it, and uh, it's super minor, but just be careful of that, that's all. Now I do want to emphasize this tab here uh, with this little central piece here on the leg. Uh, when these click together, they lock in super tight. I'll show you right now. Nice loud click right there. And that's your transformation for bot mode, but this is next to impossible to open back up for alt mode. If you keep pulling on this, you're going to break something on the inside, whether it's snapping this, I, I don't really know, <laughs> but uh, you really got to be careful uh, with this joint right here because uh, this is super tight and um, I have some serious stress marks on the other bot over there because uh, I didn't know how to actually uh, untab that properly. It's not indicated in the directions. So I found the best way to do it, which causes no harm on the figure. Just move the foot out like that. You can put your finger on the inside and just apply pressure on this portion outwards. And that just locks, um, unlocks it just like that. So much easier, much better way to do it. Don't force it otherwise because you're going to break it. These are a pain in the butt. Oh, man. Very tight, but just pop that open, flip that around. And here comes the fun part for the foot. So, what other people have mentioned is you got to be really careful of these flaps right here because if these get shoved on the inside, um, it's going to be a matter of removing pins just to remove specific parts to get that part or piece or flap whatever back out. So you got to be really careful with this um, when you're transforming it. Just be very mindful of it. Uh, what I find, it's very hard, even when it's flush like this, it's hard to pull this out and it's even hard using a tool like this to get underneath to free up that flap. So what I do is actually just take a little screwdriver here and just push straight down on this little ridge right here. And that actually frees that right up. So, super easy. But yeah, once you have that done, that basically takes care of the lower legs, or the legs all together. So we can go ahead and jump up to the upper body here. I find it easier if you just rotate the entire body 180. That gets the flap or the backpack onto the back. And then rotating the torso independently just like that. Now the backpack really isn't that tough. We're just going to fold the central piece down on the inside. And then if these are already folded inwards like so, fold this down and this is pretty clever there's a little notch on the inside back here which this is gonna pin into so you just accordion this piece inwards so it tabs in right there and if this piece here is still on the exterior like this you obviously can't fold that down 
So what you need to do is sort of rotate this inwards to get that around and then straighten that out while it's in, inside the backpack. So then you can fold that down. It's just sort of tight clearances. You want to be just aware of how you're folding these panels up because you don't want to snap anything. Um, I don't really feel like I'm in danger of breaking anything, but again, you're just dealing with a lot of panels and whatnot, so uh, just be careful. And just to touch on the stress marks I mentioned before, uh, this is the tab which was on the side of the camera. Um, when I didn't understand I had to release the leg flaps first, I was basically pulling on this piece here. Uh, I put a lot of stress on that peg right there. Not on that one though. So again, just follow that initial step, um, untab the side panels first and you're going to be in business. Um, at least you, know, you can learn from my mistakes. And then these panels here, as you push them in, they kind of just uh, almost touch each other on the inside right there. Uh, it's a very secure connection. There we go. And then lastly, the standard sort of uh, hand <laughs> transformation. Pop out the panels, flip out the hand. There we go. And that is our first guy completed. There we go. I'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and get the other two taken care of and then I'm also going to show you the backpack on this guy so you know exactly how to transform this as well. Alright and here we are with the third and central robot and everything else is pretty much transformed ready to go uh, but again I, w I did want to show off the central or backpack uh, bit on the center robot here. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what's different about that. Um, I also want to note to you guys here, on the back there are four screws, here, here, and then two under the shoulders, uh, which you pop out, and then that allows you to pull off this back piece to put in three batteries, and uh, that'll give you the light-up gimmick, which, by the way, the switch is right here for that. Um, pretty interesting gimmick. Um, it's It's okay. The the effort you have to put in in terms of getting things lined back up um, to sort of reattach this back piece, man, it was a pain in the butt. Like, it was not an easy thing to do. And now that I'm looking at it, I think these might actually be reversed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hope that's okay. I've actually transformed it a couple times since putting those batteries in, but I didn't actually notice that. But it didn't seem to have any kind of impact on my figure, so who knows. Uh, but the, the lineup gimmick is kind of neat. We'll show it off in a, a couple seconds here. But um, this is not easy. So if you get frustrated trying to you know line things back up just perfectly with little bits and pieces and having to deal with a bunch of wires and stuff, and then this whole back piece has to kind of um, go down inside of a little crevice, a little round crevice, which is basically... Um, carved out of this center sort of rotating mass right here and while this back piece is out this actually can slide forward and backwards loosely so you're trying to you have to kind of hold all the components together the two arms the headpiece the wiring the uh, lens and the light bulb on the inside and then have to kind of use another finger to push this part forward to give enough room for this curved piece to go back inside the hole and it's all super, super tight clearances, and it's such a pain in the butt. I don't know. If I had to do it again, I well, I probably would because I like the gimmick, but <laughs> it's not easy. So if you get frustrated, yeah, it may not be something for you to do. But let's get to the backpack, okay? Same idea. I'm going to rotate the entire assembly first to get that around. Fold those down inwards like that, and then rotate this face part forward like that. And then this will actually slide on a, a, a rail on the inside there, 
just to show it off from another angle. Uh, again, fold this up, you know, rotate this top section inwards, fold that in, and then slide it down as far as it goes for right now. Um, go ahead and rotate this up. These parts here are going to line into this top section up there. And then while you have it up here, you need to start bending these lower sections inwards, like so. Uh, you can't really bend these in first while it's still folded down. You kind of need the clearance while it's the backpack is more upright in order to get these in. But once you have that, you can fold these, slide these down completely, like so. And then that's just going to tab right in up top. And they don't lock quite as closely in place down below on this figure. Uh, it's a little bit looser, I'd say, versus the other two, but uh, it's still a pretty solid backpack right there. And here's Reflector in robot mode. And I gotta tell you, man, this is why I waited for this set. I think KFC is one of the best people out there in terms of sculpt and design. I don't necessarily think they had the best QC and sometimes the best materials from the past, my past experiences with the company. Um, but ever since, you know, I got Transistor, you know, I, I definitely think they're kind of on the up and up. And um, again, they're, they are affiliated with X-Transbots. Uh, they put out um, Andros or Scourge, which got really good feedback from uh, other people. So knowing that, I wanted to give these guys another shot because um, I think their sculpt is really on point. I, I love the faces on these guys. Really, it's sort of a, you know, a, a blank stare, but it's, it's really well sculpted. Uh, other companies seem to have problems getting accurate looking face sculpts. You know, the lips look good. It has a nice sort of chiseled line on the chin itself and slight chiseling along the uh, cheekbone. I think the shape of the helmet, it looks fantastic. Uh, the head sculpt and the, the helmet shape, you know, this is what I wanted from my reflector. Uh, I think that's something that, for me personally, Make Toys kind of dropped the ball on, especially the swim cap kind of design that they had. And I think Fans Toys kind of dropped the ball a little bit on the face sculpt itself. But these guys, I think, really nailed it. And just in terms of articulation, you do have a swiveled hinged head, which gets you some decent looking upwards motion, which is pretty good. Uh... You get a little bit of downward motion as well, which is not bad. You do get a universal joint on the shoulder, which can rotate a full 180. And then there's additional hinge here on the inside of the shoulder, so you get a lot of motion and movement right there. Again, nice silver painted face right there. Some sort of deep, looks like a deep red eye there as well. Uh, I love the silver and the sort of glossy sort of uh, green paint here with that little red and white emblem there as well and it's all highlighted by that nice crisp silver on the chest piece. Uh, no real paint on the arms except for the red striping there. Um, by the way, double jointed elbows, they don't give you a lot of uh, articulation, a little bit more than 90 degrees, but they are double jointed, just kind of odd that they're so limited. Wrist swivels, single pinned finger hinge right there for standard masterpiece design. Uh, ratcheted waist, super nice, super chunky, you know, metallic clicks right there. Uh, good subtle sculpted detail like throughout the pelvis. There's some nice line work, some nice line work throughout the chest and some detailing on the shoulders. You know, it may lack a little bit of paint in those areas, although I'm not sure if paint would be appropriate for those spaces, uh, but they at least sculpted in some good details there as well. Um, thighs are in really nice clicking ratchets, super gorgeous. And then it has a soft, ooh, nice buttery outward rot um, motion there as well, which I like. Knees, 90 degrees. Thigh swivel. Ankles work pretty well. I feel like there's supposed to be a soft ratchet. This one doesn't really feel like it has it. This one does. So that's kind of a, a bummer if that's meant to be a soft ratchet right there. But you get a lot of uh, mega ankle tilt, although you do get a broken up sculpt right there. Um, fair amount of articulation on the feet. You get a lot of motion on that toe and heel which work independently of each other. The only thing it's really missing on the foot is going to be like an ankle pivot, but uh, this still works out pretty well. I do like the white thigh. It has a nice sort of gray 
kneecap right there with, with some sculpted detail which kind of simulates the gears and stuff and then I do like this baby blue or powder blue kind of look on the shin as well yeah I'm not sure if that's super accurate or not but it looks really good in hand and again you have the whites and reds there as well no paint though otherwise on the legs but again we do get some sculpted detailing and then there's our back shot right there so let's talk about these backpacks they're big um, but I think they actually work out pretty well the main deterrence to this backpack in robot mode is it's just a flat plane which looks a little odd I guess in my opinion uh, you don't typically see that kind of just f one flat edge on a robot like that but uh, looking at it from the front I mean it really compresses and compacts really really nicely uh, especially the two outer figures here uh, we'll look at the center bot in a second but um, I think that looks pretty darn clean and I think in profile it even cleans up really well too there, there's not a lot of sort of outward baggage going on again the main aesthetic detraction for me is just a flat edge to it but I, I get why it's there obviously and I think from the back it still works out pretty well too but uh, not bad I, I think it's a smart solution uh, because it really it's not an area on these these figures that you're really going to be seeing I mean I don't, I'm not sure why you display these looking at them at them from behind um, and the benefit really is a really clean front look to the camera mode itself so you know I, I think the backpacks are handled pretty well and I think it's a pretty clean result and here's our center bot really nice sculpted lens here has a a plastic capped front and behind that sculpted uh, lens detailing with a little red LED which we'll show off in a second um, same paint apps everywhere I mean this guy is gonna be identical to the others except for that chest piece which again I think looks pretty nice and the backpack is just a touch larger you can kinda of see that here but uh, again you know it is sort of a, a shell former in that sense you know it's one of the sacrifices you gotta you gotta make in this, this particular design it still cleans up pretty well though I, I genuinely don't mind that look I think it actually works out pretty well and just to show it off here with that red light turned on that's pretty menacing looking it's got a really neat effect to it yeah I, I like that oh one thing I did want to show here as well is just the backpacks they may look a little floppy maybe but they're actually really sturdy I mean that took quite a bit of force to get that guy to be unplugged so just from normal sort of posing you know once it's kind of set into place I mean that backpack in my opinion stays pretty solid and just to show off another here again uh, I mean that that one actually stayed on right there so well done now some complaints I do have I think this design is it's interesting but maybe not the best solution um, because you know as you're posing it it is going to kind of come undone some of them are tolerance tolerance a little bit better than others uh, but these shin flaps like to kind of rotate a little bit as you're handling the figure I mean it's easy enough to put it back into place but you're gonna be adjusting these um, I almost wonder if it was really worth to include that I'd almost prefer that to be a, a flat static piece that's painted uh, this color because quite honestly the back of the camera I, I could live with the solid color versus trying to mimic the darker color throughout the back I think for the most part these are designed really really well uh, I'm pretty happy with how the set turned out um, paint for the most part is really clean there's a little bit of slop around like some of the edging here on some of the figures um, and I am a little bit concerned about paint wear and tear on this guy as well if you notice in here it's kinda tough to see with the light but uh, there's already paint wearing off on here and that's just from the actual uh, backpack component coming up and through and locking into place here because you're kind of putting a really tightly fitted plastic piece through that uh, point right there um, so that's a little bit of a bummer I also have a little bit of a paint chip there on the on the shin so I hope this isn't going to be a continuing issue where more and more paint is chipping off these figures um, I think this is my own fault I think I was trying to use a, uh, like a little flathead screwdriver trying to maybe push and prod things around so 
I think I chalked it up to my own ignorance and stupidity <laughs> right there. Because, uh, I mean, for the most part, every other figure looks fantastic and blemish-free. So I, I do think that was my own issue. But some of those areas, like up in here, you definitely can get some paint wear and tear just from the transformation process. But other than that, I think the sculpt looks great. The paint, for the most part, looks fantastic. Uh, the joints feel fantastic. The backpacks... Well, maybe a, a bit bulky, I think still work very, very well. So, uh, good stuff, uh, KFC. I'm definitely a, a fan of this set right here. And here we have the Reflector team with some other official and third-party Masterpiece figures. And I think they fit in really, really well. Um, if you notice, the forearms in these guys also have the peg, so you can actually put a laser, laser beak there if you want to. Um, looks pretty nice. And then... The lens for the camera can break apart. You can actually create three of these guns utilizing the legs from the tripod. And then also, the, again, the rocket launcher is the flash for the camera. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I think this is a really sharp-looking reflector set, and it really meshes well uh, with other third-party and official Masterpiece figures. So final thoughts on KFC's reflector. This is a pretty quality set, and I'm really happy I, I went ahead and waited for these guys versus maybe jumping on board with make toys or fans toys um, that's not to say that those aren't excellent figures uh, themselves I, I think they really are uh, what it really comes down to in my opinion is you know which set aesthetically sort of meets your criteria for your masterpiece display and I think KFC nailed that for me you know specifically um, if you have either of the two previous sets, do I think you should sell those off and get this? I can't say that definitively, yes or no. Uh, it really comes down, a lot of it is personal preference. Um, and I do believe that you know Fans Toys and Make Toys have put out a quality product, but I do think KFC as well has put out a, a fantastic option here as well. You know, aside from maybe the paint blemishes, you know, here and there, uh, they do feel great in hand. Uh, I think they've really learned a lot from that transistor piece. I mean, quite honestly, after four iterations of that blaster figure, I mean, they really, uh, they better learn from those mistakes and apply from their, their figures going forward. But on the bright side, it looks like they really are learning. And uh, they're starting to apply some of those fixes as we've seen with their, uh, well, X-Transbot Scourge and now the, the reflector set here. So, um, it's a good sign. I, I think it's showing progress. Uh, for this company. When, when I get down to it, I'm pretty happy with this set. Um, I think you will be too if this is the reflector that you're opting to go for. I do think you need to be mindful of some of the tabs. Uh, again, pay attention to some of the panels and how you're manipulating different pieces. Uh, just be smart with how you're applying pressure when you're unpegging and sort of manipulating those hinges because, you know, as you saw in my figures, there are some stress marks already. Uh, but I think a lot of those can be avoided just by being smart. Um, unfortunately, I feel like I was probably the guinea pig in that situ this situation because it wasn't documented very well in the instructions, unfortunately. But really, I mean, I, th I think as long as you're careful, this is going to be a fantastic option for your MP shelf. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it, and uh, hopefully I'll have some more content coming for you soon. Have a great night.